Well, we know that Jay Johnson is on the lookout for pitching. There is no doubt about that. And this class that LSU has signed is loaded with a lot of pitching. How much of it ends up at Baton Rouge? We'll just have to find (laughs) out in the draft next month. But they're going to look in the transfer portal as well. And they certainly started with a pretty nice get over the weekend. You missed this. Dylan Teabrake was the Big East Pitcher of the Year the last two seasons up at Creighton, and he is headed to Baton Rouge as a graduate transfer. Uh, he is a 6'3", 225-pound right-hander who, as I mentioned, has been the Big East Pitcher of the Year the last two years. Over the two those two seasons, um, he's made 29 starts for Creighton. He is 16-2 and two with a 2.72 ERA, 165 and two-thirds innings pitched, 132 hits, 50 earned runs, 190 strikeouts, and 57 walks. So the walks numbers are a little bit high, but the strikeout numbers, very good. 190 in 165 innings over those two seasons. Um, I watched some video of him on Twitter. It's uh, on the top of his feed. Looks like a pretty good fastball in the low Mm -hmm. 90s, bumping up to 94 miles an hour. Um, But he's been an innings eater and has certainly been a a really, really good starting pitcher um, for Creighton. We'll see what he brings to LSU, but it looks like a pretty good ad. Yeah, that's definitely the type of guys you want to be adding to the roster right now. We know how important it was last season to have those two weekend starters that you could depend on, and you just really couldn't find those guys consistently enough. Um, we know, you know, pitching in the SEC is a lot different, but I, I think for Coach Johnson and for Coach Kelly, this is exactly the guy you want to go off after a guy who's had a ton of experience at the college level. Um, obviously, can make you miss with the with the pitches, and obviously miss a lot of bats. And um, if you can get a guy like that that can, can you know eat up innings, I, I think that can really really help this baseball team. He's He projects to me as a starter on this team. Now, we, we'll see what LSU gets out of this recruiting class and who else they sign out of the transfer portal. Um, T-Break is eligible for the draft. I didn't see a ton of draft buzz on him. Um, so, uh, we'll see. I think it's fair to assume that he'll be in Baton Rouge, but, of course, he could get drafted and sign. Um, but, yeah, he's he's been a, a starter, an innings eater, and the stuff – Looks like it plays. He has never made an appearance against what I would call a, a power program. Um, so, you know, we'll, the Big East is not the best baseball conference uh, anybody's ever seen. But uh, he's been really, really good for two straight years. I love the strikeout numbers. And I liked the, the what I saw on the internet in terms of the, the stuff. The fastball, you know, 93, 94. And then the, the breaking ball is really, really good. They had his spin rates and all that kind of stuff is, is very good. So, this is a kind of a high floor guy, I think, um, who you know, projects as probably a starter. Is he a Friday night guy? I, I don't, not necessarily in line with the guys that LSU has had on Friday nights with Nola and Gosman, that type of guy. Um, but I think this is a, a really a quality ad, and you're hoping you get a little more you know, elite level talent coming from the signing class. But it's uh, I think this kid's got a chance to be be a starter on LSU's team next year. And, and really, when I look at the roster. Um, you know, Ty Floyd could be a back end of your rotation kind of guy. Uh, Javen Coleman, we'll see where his health is next year. Obviously, with the injury and having surgery, not sure I'm, I'm going to pencil him in. You're probably looking at likely a weekend rotation of three guys who were not on the team last year. I think T-Break probably projects as very potentially one of those. Yeah, no, he definitely has the best resume. Uh, when you look at the pitching staff on this team right now, as far as starters go, he definitely has the best resume by far. So I, I think for me right now, you don't want to give anyone the job, but if he continues to pitch the way he has, I, I think you got to put him somewhere in the weekend rotation. And I think, obviously, like you said, Coach Johnson, Coach Kelly, they're not done. They're going to continue to you know look through this transfer portal, try to find other guys who you know you can really depend on, who have resumes. You know that you can look to and say, "Hey, we can kind of put this guy in our in our program, and you know, see if he can help this team win." And I I think T Break's definitely one of those guys for sure. George, the uh, Greek, asks, um, "When's the MLB draft?" He's in the Body Four chat. Uh, it is July seventeenth. Is when it starts. It's a Sunday. Uh, it starts and it leaks into the next couple of days. Uh, I believe only twenty rounds uh, in this draft. It used to be a fifty round ordeal, forty round ordeal. Now I think it's twenty rounds uh, right now. So that's uh. Well, as we get closer to that draft, uh, we'll start to have some of LSU's signees on and kind of gauge where they are in the process. But it's just a little bit down the road. It's like five weeks away, so we'll kind of push that to to the back. Um, I'm at, the transfer portal is, and I made this point last week. It's going to be really, really good to to the big dogs. Um, it's going to be really good to LSU. It's going to be really good 
to Tennessee right now. I mean, you saw they go to Kansas and get get an All-American shortstop to show up. It's going to be really good to the teams in the SEC that are traditional powers. It's going to continue to cripple the have-nots. And when you've got a guy at Creighton who's been the best pitcher in the conference for two years and he just gets out of Dodge <laughs> and, and goes pitching the SEC, you know, I again, I always frame things as how it's going to affect LSU. And unequivocally, this is going to be a great thing for LSU, the, the transfer portal and going to cherry pick, guys. I don't necessarily know how great it is for the sport because when you create that chasm and it just grows and grows and grows between the haves and the have-nots, I mean, what does everybody love? They love the the March Madness, the upsets, and they love you know, doing Stony Brook. I mean, that's the story people <laughs> want to see, and I just think you're going to see it less and less as guys you know, establish themselves and then move on. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you look at some of these kids, uh, you mean, we talked to a guy like Paul Gervais, it's like, now every game's on ESPN Plus. Now you can watch every game on TV. And for a lot of these guys, you know, not getting that opportunity and not being able to be on that national stage, it's just, and it kind of opens the front door for, you know, some of these smaller programs, some of these smaller leagues. You know, guys are going to all come to these Power Five conferences. And is it great for the smaller schools? No, but I, I think for us, you can make that case for a lot of these players. They're going to get a lot bigger opportunities to kind of show what they can do um, on, on the big stage. Tanner Hall is the ace for Southern Miss. Uh, a lot of people post in the Bayou Four chat. Is he coming to LSU? I, I have not heard that. I mean, obviously their season's not even twenty four year out, uh, twenty four hours cold. Uh, so that, that that's that's not something that I have heard to this point. Um, but he's a really talented dude who's obviously from here. And again, that speaks right to my point: is anybody who has a good year at a quote unquote you know non Power Five school or whatever you want to wherever you where you want to pull guys. Just immediately look at where, oh, where else can I go? Where else can I go? And I think yeah. that's great for people to create opportunities for themselves, but it also it certainly lessens uh, what you know, some of these programs can do. So it, uh, it is what it is. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.